the afferent arteriole afferent arteriole Afferent arteriole means the arteriole that enters that enters to the glomerulus enters to inside of Bowman capsule to form later on a tuft a tuft of arteriole to form the glomerulus so focus with me now it is very important in the renal glomerulus here here is the glomerulus here is the glomerulus there is no there is no arteriole and venule there is only afferent arteriole and this afferent arteriole will then form a tuft a tuft then form invaginations invaginations or a tuft and leave the bowman capsule leave the bowman capsule as efferent here efferent arteriole and you can notice here that the diameter the diameter of afferent arteriole is larger than the diameter of efferent arteriole and this is paramount and very important later on when we will speak about the filtration inside the Roma castle in fact the importance of formation of this tuft of arteriole tuft of arteriole and the glomerulus later on is to form or to create a resistance to blood flow here a resistance to blood flow here. so when there will be a resistance to the blood flow so this will permit will allow the filtration filtration of the blood filtration means what means excessive waste products like urea like water to be filtered from the tuft of glomerulus into the Bowman capsule this structure is called Bowman capsule Bowman capsule like a funnel shape like a funnel shape structure which receives which receives what receives the filtrate from the glomerulus okay so the afferent arteriole will enter to the Bowman capsule forming invaginations or what is called a tuft and this and leave the Bowman capsule as efferent arteriole with a lesser a lesser diameter okay the second structure we can see here that and before we speak about the later on structures let's suppose that here is the glomerulus and here is the Bowman capsule now this structure is called this one is called proximal convoluted tubule and here is the loop of him and this part is called distal convoluted tubule while this part is called collecting duct so we can note here that the proximal convoluted tubule which starts which starts from Bowman capsule as you see here as you see here also this structure is the proximal convoluted tubule will leave and go down with the direction of medulla from cortex so the glomerulus always lie within the cortex histologically you can not and differentiate between the cortex and medulla of the kidney by a very empowered a very paramount or important notes which is that which is the glomeruli or 
the one or singular form is the glomerulus, cannot be seen within the medulla. So, throughout the histological sections, when I look within the microscope, if I note glomeruli, so that means I am looking, I am scanning at cortex of the kidney, not of the medulla. So, at level of cortex, here, we can see the glomerula. So, from pomal capsule, proximal convoluted tubule will leave and forming lobe of Henle. Lobe of Henle usually lies within the medulla. And by this way, by this way, we have two types of nephron. Two types of nephron. The first type, the cortical nephron. Cortical nephron. That means when the nephron here usually lies at the outermost layer of the cortex, near the capsule, in other words, near the capsule, in other words. While the other type of nephrons is the juxta medullary. Juxta means near to, close to. The juxta medullary nephrons, medullary nephrons, that means the, these nephrons lies usually near the medulla region. But we have to remind that, to recall that, the glomerulus and Roman capsule, in other words, the renal corpuscle usually must lie within the cortex, but near the border of, the border of what? Of medulla. And in this case, the medullary or juxta medullary nephrons characterized by long course must be cut by the lobe of Henle within what? Within the medulla region. So after that, and I hope that is clear for you, my dear, Let's speak in details about the renal corpuscle. Renal corpuscle, as we have mentioned before, consists of the glomerulus and <coughs> Bowman capsule. So, afferent arteriole will enter the capsule, the Bowman capsule, and making invaginations or tuft, and leave the capsule as efferent arteriole. We can see here specialized cells. Specialized cells. <coughs> I highlighted them, sorry, with the green color. These cells are secretory in nature. These cells are secretory in nature and they are called granular cells. These cells lies adjacent to, to what? To distal tubule. Focus will be here. This is the proximal tubule, convoluted tubule. When passing down and back to the cortex, it will be at level or adjacent to efferent and efferent arterioles. And here is the transverse microscopic section which elicit the distal convoluted tubule. So between the distal convoluted tubule and the glomerulus, we can see specific or specialized cells. They are appearing in green colors here, here, and contain vesicles, as you see. They are secretory cells. What do they secrete? They secrete ranin, ranin, and we will speak later on about ranin and angiotensin system. So, the granular cell. That structure of the distal tubule itself, of the distal tubule itself, and especially at the level when the distal tubule becomes close to the glomerulus, the wall of distal tubule contains specific cells. I highlighted them here with red color. These cells are called macula densa macula densa 
the macular densa cells have specific receptors and we will speak about them in next lectures but the macular densa cells the granular cells and these cells the extra and intra glomerular mesangial cells these cells here and these ones are called extra and intra glomerular mesangial cells so the mesangial cells plus granular cells plus macular densa together will form what is called juxta glomerular apparatus or compound this system or this compound which consists of the macula densa the granular cell and the extra and intraglomerular mesangial cells has a very important function by releasing or secreting the renin and then activation of angiotensin we will speak about that in next lecture so my dear for this point we will finish our lecture about the kidney as an introduction introduction sorry for the anatomical and histological structure of the kidney thank you so much and i hope i will see you with the best conditions thank you